Welcome to realacademy.net. My name is Anel Hamishma, and today I have the joy and the privilege of speaking to our very own Eric Anderson. How are you doing, Eric? Good, thank you. Midwinter, <laughs> the days are getting longer. They Solstice are is over. over. Good space. Eric, um, the question today on everyone's lips is what does it mean or take to be a good family constellations facilitator in your in your view hmm. i mean this, this is it's such it's got so many layers to it and i have found that as i progress with this this amazing work it takes on different facets um, and one of the main one of the, my main focuses is to remain in touch with the client and to remain um, clear about what they want so to keep that intention and let that intention guide the constellation so it's a really great container for the work um, and then you know in the beginning to be aware of their what what they're experiencing in their body just to keep it keep it visceral to keep it somatic um because some people when they come they don't really know what they want to do they're not so clear about actually how they would like the constellation to unfold mm. but their bodies really do know um so i'd like to i like to really stay in touch with their body um and ask them where they're feeling in the body. So I often start with the inner parts, externalizing those, those parts of the, that, that they've identified in the body, and then to externalize those as representatives. And um, then just to let it grow from there. For, so not to start too complicated, not to start too dense, you know, not too many representatives, and then really let it let it organically grow and um, let the, the, the field speak. Um, as a facilitator, I'm, I feel like I'm giving a voice to the field. Um, so I'm remaining in contact with the energy of the field. And um, just to give it that space to, to go where it wants to. Hmm. And um, yeah, I, I I am really, I feel very privileged when a, a client says to me, you know, I completely trust, I completely trust you with it, you know, because I, I, I always tell them in the beginning, um, you know, I'm going to really follow the field here. So it may develop in a way that's unexpected, but we will go back, we will return. Um, yeah, so I, I also... I use uh, Bertolt Olsmer's, um, his triangle of, of reality, energy, and orders. I keep that in the back of my mind when I do a constellation. Tell me more about uh, because that. I can. So the energy of a constellation would be how the representatives, the position that the representatives are taking. Are they standing facing each other or away from each other? How do, how do they want to move? Um, and then the reality would be um, what actually happened? You know, not, not going too abstract. Or if one is abstract, to take it more into the reality. So often the constellation for me, especially when I'm following the field and the energy of the field, so the positions, but also actually what the field, what I'm sensing in the field. Um, I, I really do um, keep it, I, I like to keep it real. Um, because when one goes into the energy, it can get quite abstract. Mm. So keeping it real, and keeping, asking, staying in touch with the client. Um, because as you progress and as they remain, if they are, if they remain with the constellation, you know, they will tell you, about certain things that have happened as the constellation progresses. Yes. It will trigger memories in them or it will trigger comments in them. 
Um, so that really brings you to the reality. So yeah, that's when I asked them, okay, so what else would you like to tell me here? What else are you, are you experiencing in your, in your body? And, you know, it's, it's really valuable information. Mm. Um, and then also, yeah, and then also to remember the orders, uh, the orders of love. You know, the firstborn, the secondborn, the thirdborn, and those, the, the, el the elders, those, the parents coming before the, the children, the grandparents coming before the parents, those, those orders. And um, that really grounds the constellation. Um, so yeah, that, that, that is something that I really have to honor Bertolt for. Um, it could be that he, he gets it from somewhere else as well, but I really honor him for that. Because mm. It's helped me so much. Mm. I recently had a very interesting conversation with Bertolt uh, for one of our upcoming workshops called Resources for Beginners and Intermediate Facilitators. So if you want to see more about Bertolt, and I'm just trying to think back, he spoke about something similar in one of our, in one of our meetings. It might have been that, I'm not 100% sure. Um, Eric, is there, have you ever seen a facilitator do something that you were like, oh, uh, you know, like a fatal, <laughs> a fatal mistake? Are there any fatal mistakes that we should like be aware of? I mean, I mean, flip. Uh, when, when we all have our own flavor, you know, as facilitators, we all have our own flavor. And we all work, hopefully work with our own strengths, you know, as, and, um, uh, you know, in the beginning, in the beginning when I was doing the training, it was quite glaring what I did that was perhaps um, too forceful and perhaps some of my, my clients, my peers. Um, yeah, I would say putting, putting too much structure putting too much from your own um, learning, if you like, into a constellation that is perhaps not a match for what the field is actually revealing and bringing, bringing to the surface. Mm. And I would say also maybe losing touch with the client and getting too entangled yourself as a facilitator in the story of the ancestors. Um, yeah, the, the things like that that I, you know, these are these are mistakes that I also make, and um, I really notice. I do notice it in other constellations. Yet, as I've progressed with this, I really am a lot more. Well, I, I try to be more humble about when I watch somebody else facilitate, because it is such a. It is such a big experience and it's such a layered, multifaceted experience. Mm. And to hold that, you know, I really have such respect for other facilitators who can do it. So, you know, and I also, I think I also honor the, that the field might not want certain things to surface at that stage. So maybe something that I can see as, as an onlooker is maybe not meant to, um, come up during the constellation. Um, so this, I, I sort of have to maybe have a bit more of a of an honouring of other people's work. Mm. Mm. Um, but I, I would say, what what does jar if it is if there is um, a lack of touch and connection with the client. You know, I recently realized that there is apparently a school of family constellations that discourage that. <laughs> there is a school of family constellations where they don't want to have too much of a connection with the client. Um, and I, mm. I was never aware of that. And I can't quite um, imagine what, what that would look like in practice. But um, I, was, I was very interested to, to hear about it. Different strokes for different folks. Definitely, definitely different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Eric, thank you so much for your time. Is there anything you would like to add before we wrap up? 
I would say maybe for, for completeness, for, for the original question, um, at the end of the constellation, uh, the, the, what, the, what, a what a client actually takes home is something that I would also just like to mention as, a, as an ending, um, helping them to process it and helping them to um, digest it, integrate it, you know, and, and to also sort of debrief them because they're gonna, they're gonna walk out of a constellation with all of this imagery and all of this, you know, experience. Um, and just to, just to sort of brief them into their week or into the weeks ahead of them without uh, putting too much into their, into their psyche. Um, so it's a fine balance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah.